Welcome to the Defense and Aerospace Report. I'm Vaga Maradian here at the courtyard of the Pentagon for DOD's annual Lab Day, number one gathering of labs from across the DOD ecosystem to show off some of their best technology to uh, senior military leaders, folks who are in the building, as well as media. And they are tearing down DOD Lab Day now, which is why you hear beeping and uh, everything else. We're here at the U.S. Army Development Command, uh, part of the Army Research uh, Lab. Talk to Jason Pusey, uh, who is a mechanical engineer for uh, Autonomous Systems. Uh, Jason, beautiful vehicle. What does it do, and why is it so important, and why is it here? So this is a uh, the Roman platform, the robotic manipulation platform. It's part of the Robotics Collaborative Technology Alliance, which is a consortium between academia, industry, and government employees. Uh, what we do with this platform is actually try to make it uh, and to increase the autonomy for the uh, for the soldier. So we're, we're trying to implement high-level uh, behaviors and controls so we can actually say, for instance, maybe go into the cafeteria and pick up my book bag, and I don't want to actually command it through a joystick. I actually want to sit here and uh, allow it to go do its thing, and maybe it'll go to the door, open the door, go into the cafeteria, find the book bag, pick up their book bag, and says, I got it. Just report back to me. I got it. What do you want me to do with it? So for this particular platform, we're actually trying to integrate the sensing the intelligence and the manipulation all into one platform with no ability. So we can actually enable the, the, uh, to do some of those kind of tasks. And uh, talk to us a little bit about how um, combination of AI, uh, but also just computing power and a number of other things that are coming to a nexus that are allowing you to develop some of these more autonomous systems and get them to the point where they're actually fieldable. They're not theoretical capabilities that are remote controlled, that there will be capabilities that will be in soldiers' hands to do everything from um, you know, being like a portable pack animal to being able to execute complex missions. Okay, so some of the things that we're trying to implement are uh, like, like the perception sensor suite. Uh, we can overlay uh, distance data with um, uh, with, with partic a particular picture of, it, of the environment. So I can see a, a book bag and I can actually overlay the distance it is from me with the color, with the shape, the size, the texture of it. And I can compare that to other uh, book bags that are in the room or uh, objects of interest, and this allows me to, I don't know, to be able to pick up the object better or to be able to understand what I want to do with that object. So maybe it's a box, maybe I understand a box that I handle, I want to open up all the boxes. So these are some of the tasks that we're trying to, to mix up to, to make it more robust to able to do more things. Um, and, and what are some of the challenges and lessons you learned in being able to do that? Because it's not until you've got to program a device to do something that we as humans take very easily for granted to realize you've got to do a lot of work to do something that you and I actually don't think about really at all before we do it. Some of it's uh, fine-tuned, like manipulation, for, in particular for manipulation, fine-tuning, picking up small items, sorting small items. Other things are actually just being able to behaviorally understand the environment and what you're supposed to do. like. Maybe there's a, a wall in your way you need to open a door. Maybe that you can drive around it, look around the other side. So things that we take for granted, like opening a door, there's hundreds and thousands of different doorknobs out there. We, we know that a door swings a certain way. We know that if you push it or turn it, it probably will open some way unless it's locked. So trying to actually program these very basic fundamental functions and understandings of the, of the environment tends to become difficult. So that's where an AI and learning and machine learning, that kind of stuff might help us out with a, expanding our training set to incorporate the hundreds of thousands of different doorknobs that we're actually trying to manipulate. Um, so is it, um, so how long, you know, for example, if you look at autom autonomous driving, we've come an enormous way from DARPA Grand Challenge to the point where there are cars on our roads with level six autonomy and things like that. Um, how long before you can have battlefield autonomous unmanned systems like this that are able to deal with that vast range, right? I mean, if we're thinking about how to open doors and how. I'm not sure I can answer the, uh, the range of timeline. I don't, I don't know about uh, that kind of stuff. That's pretty far away. Um, I'm not sure I can give you a, an honest answer. I, I, yeah. it's, it always makes me curious because, you know, as you said, right, you don't think about it until somebody as experienced as you goes, well, just think about how many doorknobs, right? It, it, all of a sudden you go like, holy crap, you run into hundreds of different kinds of doorknobs over the course of a week yeah. or, you know, or a month. That and you don't think you automatically look at it and you go, oh, I got to pull that out, I got to push in. Whereas this has got to somehow learn that, right? Yeah, the devil is in the details. Understanding how to to break down a certain situation and not only break down a situation but also to understand all the disturbances that might be coming into you to uh, 
to mess up your ideal box of how I pick something up or how do I play something. Jason Pusey, uh, who does autonomous systems at Army Research Labs Development, or, or the Ar U.S. Army Development Command's Army Research Laboratory. Sir, thanks very much. Absolute pleasure. Thank you. You have a lovely vehicle. Thank you.